चैप्टर टू सेल्फ एंड पर्सनैलिटी वेल स्टूडेंट्स द स्टडी ऑफ सेल्फ एंड पर्सनैलिटी हेल्प्स एस टू अंडरस्टैंड आवर सेल्फ एज वेल एज अदर्स एन इंडिविजुअल सेल्फ डेवलप्स थ्रू सोशल इंटरेक्शन विथ सिग्निफिकेंट अदर्स लेट एस कम टू सम वाइटल टर्मिनोलॉजीज पर्सनल आइडेंटिटी सोशल आइडेंटिटी एंड सेल्फ वट इज पर्सनल आइडेंटिटी दोज एट्रीब्यूट्स ऑफ अ पर्सन दैट मेक हिम डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर्स इज नोन एज पर्सनल आइडेंटिटी यू ऑल्सो मस्ट बी हैविंग सर्टन एट्रीब्यूट्स सर्टन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दैट मेक यू डिस्टिंग फ्रॉम अदर्स दैट मेक यू डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर्स सो दैट इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज पर्सनल आइडेंटिटी सोशल आइडेंटिटी ऑन दी अदर हैंड रेफर्स टू दोज एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ अ पर्सन that link him to a social or a cultural group well you find place in the society if you are linked to a social group or any kind of cultural group maybe you are a part of a music group a theater group maybe a, a, a dance group so that is your social identity now coming to the concept of self the chapter is of self and personality so we need to understand what is exactly self self is totality of an individual's conscious experiences that means those experiences in life which he has been totally uh, conscious of or he has been facing his ideas his thoughts his feelings with regard to himself or herself that is known as self i repeat the definition again self is a totality of an individual's conscious experiences ideas thoughts and feelings with regard to himself or herself coming to the next concept of self as a subject and self as an object when self is a subject self is a knower self is an actor and self is engaged in the process of knowing itself but when the self is getting observed it becomes to be known as self as an object kinds of self there are three kinds of self as you can see from this chart personal self social self familial or relational self personal self the personal self is primarily concerned about oneself the social self as the name indicates or as the term indicates emerges in relationship with others you are a part of society so in a society you can witness such kind of characteristics like cooperation unity sacrifice support etc so your social self emerges in relationship with the others the familial or relational self values the family and social relationships let's come to the next topic the cognitive and the behavioral aspects of self here first of all i would like to focus upon the concept of self concept the way we perceive ourselves and the ideas we hold about our competencies and even attributes is known as self concept it can be both positive and it can be negative one can have positive self concept for example about your academic talent you may have a positive self concept whereas regarding your athletic ability you may have a negative self concept the cognitive aspects of self involve the self esteem we always make some judgment about our values or about our worthiness this value judgment about oneself is called self esteem it is said that the children between the age group of 7 to 11 years they develop self esteem in four areas academic social physical athletic and even physical appearance coming to the next cognitive aspect which is called self efficacy self efficacy basically you know people they differ in the extent to which they can control the outcomes of life or outcomes of life are being controlled by luck or fate it means 
there are two categories of people. One set of people believe that yes, whatever outcomes in life are going to happen, I am going to control them. They are under my control. And other people, they leave their outcomes to fate or to luck. The notion of self-efficacy is based on Bandura's social learning theory. We have learned this particular theory in class 11, chapter 6, that is the learning chapter. So, it has been said that those people who are having a high self-efficacy, they believe that they have complete ability required by a situation and they can control the outcomes of life. Now, coming to the next concept of self-regulation. Self-regulation means ability to organize and monitor one's own behavior. It is a behavioral aspect of self. Now, we are able to control our own behavior as per the demands of the environment. It involves a very important concept which is called self-control. Under self-regulation, self-control is there, which means learning to delay the gratification of needs. That means the, peop the people realize that they have certain requirements at this hour, but the people, they have a, uh, you know, they, they can control or they can defer, they can delay rather the gratification of needs to some other time. For example, in our country, the concept of Vrat or Rosa, they are effective mechanisms for exercising self-control where you are able to go without food for hours together because you have that particular self-control or willpower over yourself. Now, there are certain techniques of self-control which I would like to focus upon. How you can focus self-control? Number one, observation of one's own behavior. Number two, self-instruction. And number three, self-reinforcement. Now, regarding observation of one's own behavior, I would like to explain here, children, that it allows us to change or modify our certain aspects of self. Self-instruction. Every day you get up in the morning, instruct yourself to do something or to behave in a particular way. That is called self-instruction. Then we have self-reinforcement. You reward the behavior that have a pleasant outcome. For example, if you have studied for an hour or maybe for two hours, you can reward yourself by watching your favorite program on television or going and having your favorite dish. Right? If you do well in the exam, also you can reward yourself by going and having a treat for yourself. So these are the various techniques of self-control which are very, very realistic and if applied in daily life can definitely help us to achieve our goals. Students, let us take up the concept of culture and self. Well, uh, there has been an analysis about culture as well as self, both in Indian perspective as well as Western perspective. And there have been certain differences between the Western as well as Indian perspective of self. As you can see in this particular diagram, individual and group, they are two separate entities altogether. And you can find that there is a boundary between the self and the other people, which is very, very fixed in nature, quite fixed in nature. And there are two different entities with a defined boundary. This is Western culture, which is called individualistic culture. On the other hand, if you see the other diagram, which depicts the Indian perspective, there is a shifting nature in the boundary. Individual and the group, they have a homogeneous coexistence. So, it is referred to as collectivistic. Now, after this, I would like to focus upon what is personality. Because the chapter deals with self and personality and we have already covered self and its various aspects. Now, we need to start touch upon personality. What is personality? It is our characteristic way of responding to individuals and situation. To justify this with an example, let us assume that you have a very complicated situation before you and uh, you have to deal with the situation. You are unable to understand how to deal with it. So there are two ways you can deal with it as far as your personality is concerned. Either you can have a very peaceful bent of mind, you maintain your calm and composure 
and you deal with the situation intelligently, keeping yourself absolutely cool and relaxed. Whereas there can be another way, some people they react uh, negatively and they are totally confused and flabbergasted how to deal with the situation. So this is your characteristic way of how you respond to individual and to a situation. So personality has the following characteristics. One is a physical component and the other is a psychological component. The physical component is denoted by your appearance, whereas the psychological component is denoted by your behavior, the way you react, your emotions, etc. Every person's behavior is very much unique and different from others. A person's behavior is even dynamic, that is it keeps on changing and adapts itself to various situations. The main features of a personality, they do not change over a period of time. 